right. Um, it, Pico, is it better for Pico or Reed? Uh, Pico, uh, either one, honestly, Pico is probably better. Okay, all right, then I'll ask you the first question. Um, uh -oh. We're on move number eight, and the idea is we're looking for the best move in the situation. Um, so okay. every example is going to be from a real game, from um, either a double digit queue or a single digit queue. Um. So in this case, if we just want to look, um, white did an armpit hit, and then black um, pushed on it and took the corner, and then white pushed forward. And so now we're at the move. What should black do next? I would say B. B. Okay. Um, this is correct, but why B compared to A or C? Um, A and C, uh, A is okay. I think it's just, I think, a bit of a, a slow move, okay. maybe? Um, because, I mean, it just builds a wall, which is nice, but then, I mean, white will just go at B and you'll be in the same situation. All right. Um, yeah, so with B, so the idea in, is is that, you know, you two are in a race right now, right? To see who can get the better amount of territory. And when you, uh, it's Black's turn with White pressing against this Black wall here, Black uh, being allowed to Hane here is getting in front of White, right? And so this would be, if it went like this, this would be bad for White and really good for Black, right? Um, and even if we went further... You know, and it went something like this. Uh, once again, I think this would be really good for black and very bad for white because white is getting turned in and turned around. So in the race, the white is losing, right? Um, so my last question then is, this is an extra question for you. Is this cutting point safe? If it's safe, then this number one move is correct, which I told you it's correct. But can you read uh, <laughs> what happens if white plays here? <laughs> Um, if white plays there, I don't think it's very safe for white because black could just, I think, play it um, P15 or obviously they could Atari or something like that. It's, I think white is a little bit weak right there. <laughs> yeah, and so in order to really be comfortable with um leaving a cutting point like this we have to make sure to read it before we just do what we think is right um so in this case uh if black played something like this then i think bl these black stones might be in more trouble than you think uh they might be okay um it could get kind of complicated but if it had to go like this then white is going to get out and then black is going to be in trouble um i mean so isn't white so it becomes very complicated to make this easier though, you can just Atari. And you can see that black has three liberties and white only has two. And so this is just a very uh, easy way to handle this without making it too complicated. Um, in the game, um, well, Marty uh, played here because I think he was uncomfortable with this cutting point. But this move isn't as good as hitting the two head of two stones here. Um, and so we, I wanted to talk about it in general, but yeah, uh, because this cutting point is safe, it's much better to get in, ahead of your opponent in the race and take the advantage. Um, so I'll move on to the next question. And I'll ask Marty. Marty, uh, this is a good review for you. We have a very similar situation. <laughs> Um, and so now we have B, A, and C. Uh, what do you think the best move here would be? Well, do not, Hane. That's what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> so I think it must be A. Uh, okay. Must, yeah. I okay. Think so, uh, um, Marty, uh, you remembered your lesson, so that's good. Because uh, this is like kind of a trick question, right? Because we just told you that B is good against A here, right? Against these two stones, right? It's getting ahead. But the problem now with this situation, this situation is vastly different from the one we have here. And the reason is, is because white is very strong here. So 
once white now cuts, there's no easy kill for black, right? This is this doesn't kill anymore. It's not the same. Um, and so now these stones have, are in a lot of trouble. And whether they live or not, um, white, I think, is very comfortable here. And so it, uh, black now has to, like, you know, try and live. And this uh, might not happen. This, it, it looks a little dicey. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd have to read a lot of this before I choose any of these moves here, but just a quick, you know, like, evaluation. I can see that um, black looks like it's having a very hard time. So, uh, it's funny that this is the same exact situation in the game, um, but the outcome is different, and it depends on the help of the wall or not. So in this case, when you're on the third line, it's very good because you can kill the stones very easily. In this case, uh, white has a lot of strength here, and so when you leave a cutting point, you have to read if this cut is okay. And in this case, I don't think it's okay. I think this is very dangerous for for black now, even if we had just played uh, simply like this. Uh, there's many, many situations that can come out of this fight, but just on the the look of it, like uh, looking at the surrounding area, uh, white looks like it has the advantage in this fight. So uh, yes, um, it isn't B, and then A to me feels very comfortable, because uh, then you can still kind of get out, right? You could poke here, and then you can play something like this. And as long as you stay strong, then this group becomes fairly weaker, and this group still doesn't have any eyes. So if white has to play something like this, and black starts poking at the eye shape here, um, it could get very uncomfortable for white. If white has to like play a backtracking move like this to live, then you know black has gotten all the advantage and then can continue the game. Okay. So um two good examples of the same problem, uh just different situations. Alright, I'm gonna move to the next one. And I'm going to ask Terry. Terry, uh we have the situation um, where black played here and then white is trying to cut through. So what is the best move here for black? Um, I think the best move is C because I don't think I can block at, I don't think blocking at A does any good and blocking at B leaves more cutting points. Yes, yes, yes. Two cutting points. Uh, Romeo Juliet split, right? And breaking the knight's move split. Uh, this uh -huh. would be pretty bad for black. He, black may die on both sides or at least one side. Um, right? This wouldn't be good for black. So um, fixing this problem would be good. And so in the game, uh, Marty ended up playing this empty triangle. But we know that empty triangles are generally bad. And especially in this case where there's two cutting points. So it's much better to make this um, nice shape move. So what I always tell my students who end up making lots of these empty triangles is that if you feel like you want to make an empty triangle, read out the one jump first. So this is a one jump away from the two stones. And this leads to much better shape. This leads to a, a much nicer shape. So it fixes the problem here, keeping the corner and then, you know, that's really the goal, right? And then this cutting point, just like the last one, we can see that we can kill these stones. Even if um, we play like this, because the ladder doesn't work, then we can kill it. And then same here, we have three liberties or two liberties, but we win the capture and race. And so knowing that this cutting point is safe when you have like an extra stone here is very, very important. It's gonna come up in a lot of your games. So oh, this that's is, cool. Yeah, this is like hitting the head of the stone. So uh, yeah. in the other examples, there was two stones like this. Um, and so it's very similar. Uh, so that's like the same position as we had on the right side in the beginning. Yep, exactly. And even here in the middle. And it's because a lot of stones that bump next to each other, attached to each other, become in these running races, right? And so the goal is to get ahead of your opponent. And so this situation is going to come up in a lot of your games, if not every game. So 
it's very important to understand these sh how these shape points work. All right, um, let's move to move fifty. Um, Bonnie, let's see what you got. <laughs> um, best move here. Um. Maybe. Well, that that's that's a lot of reading. <laughs> that's <laughs> hard. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um. B. <laughs> B. Okay. Um. So when we hit B, uh, can White do anything against you, or is White dead? I. I think it's dead or a coal or something. <laughs> <laughs> a little early, huh? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, uh, if white plays here, you can play down. And white only has two liberties. White can't play here, right? And white can't play here. And then white can't even play here, right? Because this is it. You you just have more than enough liberties to kill this group. So B is correct. Um, and it, what it does is this is kind of like. The capturing race um, uh, lecture we did last week, right? In the in the problems we did, the idea is that we gotta stop white from making an eye and stop white from getting more liberties. So just making white down to two liberties is the the key, right? In this situation. Um, so... There was a white stone at f seventeen. F seventeen. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. Earlier, if there was already before B19, it would still work. Uh, like which uh, you need to start with white instead of B9. Yeah. No. Oh, if you start with white. white. Yeah. Yeah, if you start with white, uh, this would definitely be a different story. But yeah. fortunately, it's black smooth. So. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I, I'm, you know, uh. I, I didn't think about if it was White's turn first because it wasn't. But if we want to do that exercise, I guess we can. So for me, uh, I would probably maybe I, I'd either Atari or extend the liberties, right? So um, this would become <clears throat> almost like a co, but not really um, because well, yeah, I, it would become a co. Uh, in this case, white plays here. Um, black makes the eye. White plays down. Uh, I mean, it looks pretty bad for black. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, white would want to extend down. This would lead to co. This would just lead to getting one extra liberty. And then that would allow you time to kill these. Okay. Same thing. So, so Michael, if you go back to the beginning, the, the question that you asked, mm -hmm. how... How do you look at this and say, I know it's B? Um, so funny enough, C works, but it gets really complicated. Um, but <laughs> when I look at this, um, just like in the example that we looked at, um, B, this was the correct move, right? And so <clears throat> I know this because it helps create like an I space and gives extra liberties. I so see. by limiting the white's uh, opportunity to make extra liberties, like white only has two options now. And this uh, right now it only has two liberties. And when it plays here, it only has two liberties. <clears throat> Same with here, only two liberties. Yeah. So um, you're just stopping white from making extra <clears throat> liberties. Does that make sense? Yep. You know, it's really interesting that you say that C works too, because when I first looked at this, I was recalling the idea of making an I for yourself. And I was really struggling between uh, 
D19 and B19 before I decided on B19. Because, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Because, you know, you can, making an eye for yourself is one of the strategies. Yeah. I I was going to say, I I better just triple read this to make sure because actually i don't think it works <laughs> okay, uh, so, okay so yeah i don't think c works but it was one of my first thoughts and for some reason i did think it was working and that's because as you said making an eye is like one of the key strategies but in this case uh shorting the liberties is the, the real goal here so this was a bit of a hard question um but um you know, I think when you look at it, like when you see like, oh, this is the answer, then it's very obvious, right? It's like, oh, that I should have known that. You know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't even have exactly. to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so this, this player set many uh, lessons for me in the beginning of the game. I found it very difficult to play whoever it was. Yeah, yeah. Lots and lots of shape um, questions, which is good, right? Because shape is like one of my specialties. So. There's a really good uh, example of like many, many, many questions. Um, all right, so I'll move on to the last one. So uh, we will ask Pico. What do you think is next? So when we look at what happened, we have like a bit of a running race here and Black Atari, and now it is Black's next move. Um, I think I would go with goodness. Um, A looks tempting, but I think it's a little too easy to get out of that Atari and like mess things up for black. Um, I'd probably go with C. Um, Largely because black is kind of weak on the bottom there. And um, so extending out with B would probably not work out well. Um, so yeah, definitely C. All right. Yeah, C is the correct answer. So um, when you're in this like cross fight, right? We don't want a Atari, Atari, right? So we already have like one Atari. We don't want another Atari because what happens is is white gets stronger, black now has weakness, and then white can just continue to get stronger, right? Um, and so Ataring is usually not the answer. Uh, it's very rare when it is. If it involved like a perfect life and death where you just needed these to like live and then you'd be fine, then I could see it happening. But nine times out of ten, the answer is to set up the ladder. Um, because now if white just leaves it alone, then one, you can come out with the stone or two, you can uh, manipulate it because if white doesn't answer each time, then you'll be able to turn white into itself, which is really bad. So uh, the sacrifice gets used very, you know, very well. Um, but if you play in the other order, you have to come backwards, and this allows white to change. It's uh, the who's doing better in this race. So by setting up this ladder, uh, it also just sets up a ladder, right? So if the ladder works, then this is great for black. Um, so usually in these these fights here, if you take the Atari, then you want to extend to fix your weakness and to threaten the stone. And then, you know, the fight will continue. And having this hitting the head of the two stones is usually quite an advantage. Um, I'd have to read it a lot to make sure, like, I'm comfortable with this cut and see where it goes. Because this ladder doesn't work when there's also a hitting of the two heads here. So, you know, maybe it might be worth playing here now um, and seeing if white follows. If you can um, get strong enough where you don't have to answer anymore, then you can come out and create a weakness for white here. But anyway, it doesn't. It, this is kind of a, a complicated area, especially for double digit Q players. Even at my level, I still see people making mistakes all the time with this type of stuff. Um, but this is definitely the move. Uh, this one is definitely the, the wrong move. Um, this is what happened in the game. So then black has now two weak groups, right? And then 
so black had to submit and then black gets killed so um the idea of pulling this stone that is uh, supposed to be a sacrifice stone is very it's very weak and pressed up against a big white wall you don't want to save this stone right this is used for sacrifice uh, uh, sacrificial reasons um that's it <laughs> all right uh i'll move on to the next game and we'll get to the next set of questions marty uh this is not your game uh, Thank God. So, so let's let's um do figure out the best move here so we have uh white just kicked and now it is black's turn I, I think the rule says you have to go to B. Okay. All right. That's a good rule to follow. Um, yeah. So with B, you have an iron pillar versus the diagonal. This is a very good shape to have against the diagonal because usually you can um, play, you know, moves uh, like here or here, and there's like a big weakness um it, or even here right and so having strength against this corner this kicking group is very good um for black and it needs this strong wall in order to have this advantage um without it so if we played this move uh when white plays this one you, the stone's already hurting right like quite a lot so you know do you defend it if you do then you know white can just continue on and what happens is all the Aji in this this area is kind of gone now. Mm. Um, let me just see. I'm always bad with this part of it, but I feel like you know Black is gonna have a very hard time trying to live in this area because White is uh, just that much more powerful. So the the um, invasion and all the strength you had against this corner goes away once white gets this attachment on top. Um, and so that's why the shape point is so important. Not only is it important just for the corner itself, but when we look, this is a, a tiger's mouth, right? It's the form of a tiger's mouth. So giving our opponents these panuki slash tiger's mouth um, positions is very powerful for white and very bad for black. <coughs> so yeah, breaking this tiger's mouth is really good. <clears throat> but I understand that it looks sort of over concentrated, right? You're if you if you make the if you extend to where one is for black. Yeah, you could say that um there's some over concentration here. But and same, at the same same for white, so yeah, I was going to say at the same time, um, though, it's nice to have a, a big area that's secure, right? Right. Um, maybe... No, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant not, I can see why Black might not have made the iron pillar because the extension is, the, the stone on C9 is close. Oh, I see, I see. Um, yes, it is n not perfect, right? When we when we lo look at a two stone wall, we want a three space extension. But in the this day and age, um, the computers have like confirmed that this is fine, and a lot of the pros play this way now. Uh, this is something I learned from Inseong uh, himself, and the reason is is because as long as you have some safety, then you can just move somewhere else or get a better advantage in a fighting game, right? So uh, allowing you to, even though it's a little cramped, um, it allows you so many more options to fight and attack later. So the, the, that's the idea of like, okay, I need to get strong now, and then I will uh, use the strength to later to fight, right? If white comes in here or somewhere out here or something, you, you're strong, and so now you can just continue to attack this stone. Um, and so you can use your strength to fight. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'll move on to the next one. And I will ask Terry. Terry, what are we looking at here? Uh, when we see, you know, um, Black made this invasion and White attached on top, uh, what would be the next best move? Well, um... B looks so cuttable. 
Mm. And uh, C looks like it's just going to get trapped. Um, and well, A also looks cuttable. So uh, <laughs> nothing's looking good to me here. So one of them has to be better. Um, so I'm thinking the H3 stone is looking pretty sad. And maybe I need to play B in order to threaten the L3 stone. So I'm going with B. Okay, all right. Um, so B, as you said, is very cuttable and uh, is not the correct answer in this one. Um, and the reason is, is because, well, we can see in the game um, that one, it gets cut. And so then um, white has secured a lot of territory here very easily. And then also black hasn't gotten a lot here. And then even more so, um, white is able to um, pressure on top, which then allowed for this Moyo, or at least this influence to become a lot bigger. And so uh, being cut here like this isn't uh, a good idea. Instead, for black, whenever we have these uh, on top attachments like this, our first instinct should be to break the tiger's mouth. Um, and you said you were worried about being trapped. But if we go like this, does this look uh, bad? Or even if we have to submit under? Yeah, that looks that looks good. Yeah. This is nice, right? You're getting yeah. uh, more <clears throat> territory and taking away a lot of territory from white. Um, right. And so white's still getting a lot of influence. White does get a lot of influence, but with black stones <clears throat> being high here, it's going to be hard for white to make um, a lot of territory here, right? Especially right. with you coming out this way and this way. Um, so there's it's going to be hard for white to use this. Um, if you were worried about the influence and stuff like that, then you wouldn't play here at the start anyway, right? You right. would uh, continue on and build your own stuff while breaking up this. Um, or, you know, so whatever else. But in the case of this local shape, uh, one of the goals that, or one of the things that should always trigger in your head is um, to always break the tiger's mouth. It's like almost a, like an instinct for me now. Like it's ingrained in my brain, right? Same with this. This is breaking the tiger's mouth and this one. And so at this point, maybe you'll ask like if white plays this, well, now you can Atari and get stronger. And as you can see, uh, you should be more than fine to either take this territory or at least break up um, White's area quite a bit. And later this cut becomes scary and, you know, all this. But usually um, White will come back and connect here and then uh, Black can you know, then claim its area. So... Yes, uh, break, and when somebody attaches on top to you like this, we want to follow the golden rule of attachment, right? And the first thing we want to look at is the Atari to see uh, if we can Hane and counterattack. And because we can't, um, this gets pretty ugly, right? Like for white, um, I wouldn't want to be black in this situation. Sorry, it doesn't get ugly for white. It gets ugly for black. Um so since we can't then the next thing we want to do for the, the the rule is to extend and become stronger and in this case we be, can become very strong so it, it's very nice i think you might even be able to get away with this but it is much riskier and i would involve a lot more reading so if you're just looking for something simple i mean this this is a good result for black as well all right. Any, any questions on why, you know, C, breaking the tiger's mouth is more important than uh, making a knight's move that can get cut? No, I like the idea of breaking the tiger's mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very important to, to understand uh, how this really hurts a shape and then builds your own in both cases here. All right. Um, so we got one more question for this one. And I will ask Bonnie. Bonnie, what do we, what do we, uh, what the question is, uh, is the A group alive or dead right now? Or undecided? 
I'm always on this side. <laughs> uh, but it's a life. Okay. Uh, yes. So. Four, day three. Yes. So the idea is that if this is alive, then we should then look for the next biggest move, right? We should be looking for some good move that will get us at least eight points or more. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's mainly it. We want to look somewhere else. In the game, uh, you ended up playing here, which was unnecessary because this is already alive. And so for white, white shouldn't answer. White should then take the next biggest move and like, you know, try and hurt your group, right? Try and make it worse for you. So, um, Michael, humor me. Why is it alive? So I'll ask you, I'll counter ask you, um, let's say it's white's turn. How do you kill black in this situation? This is how you should be thinking in your your real games, right? Like if I want to nuke, if I think it's alive, let me read if I could kill it. So let's say if black tanukis, it's now so white's honey, turn. honey. Mm -hmm. And then and then what would happen? Black will descend. Mm -hmm. And then what Speaking will happen? Of... Oh, I guess white has to. Fix, but don't that's the question doesn't black have to do something after that when you say it's alive you mean it doesn't live in gote i'm just trying to figure this out it does but you ended up getting your sente move first so the idea is that uh you got you the, the better move here and even if uh you take the better move and white has to respond you know i wouldn't call this gote right i'd call this sente um well is there a better killing try? Mm, not that I see. So this gets separated and killed, and black has two eyes. This gets... Um, uh, black already has two eyes here anyway, so black actually can take the sente move again. Uh, you know, and so black can end up getting, like, two sente moves. Because if white has to play again, black now still two has two eyes. And even more, I didn't even uh, look at this move, but... Oh, okay, that's why. Um, <laughs> so, Sente. Sente again, right? So, because uh, black is alive here. Even if white tries this, black is still alive. Okay, thank you. No no worries. I, I didn't mean to sound defensive. But um, definitely, um, well, you have to do your, like, one, two, three reading, right? You have to... Be able to see that like if i play here and white plays here and i play here am i gonna live right and the answer is uh very easily right like there's even even if white tries it's very hardest to and even tries to create a co but it's a fall it's alive because black's alive right blacks just has two eyes so it's it would have to take one two uh let me see two three moves in order for white to uh kill black and will you ever give white three moves in a row right no uh, uh yeah i'd hope not right <laughs> so yes so yes uh this is very much alive um and if you if you couldn't tell right away right like um i think even bonnie said she's uh, uncertain right uh you just have to make sure to do your reading like to, uh, you don't want to make moves on the second line if you don't have to, right? This is an end game move. We do, if we're playing end game moves really early in the game, then we're losing out on quite a lot of um, potential territory or opportunity. So uh, I ho try and feel how I feel if I had made a move like this, and what I'd feel is is like pain, right? I'd be like, oh, this is. This is so slow. If I had to make this to live, like it, it just hurts. <laughs> so giving away sente is like the, the one of the worst things you can do. Um, and as a double digit Q player, I definitely didn't get that. I didn't understand that at all until I was past seven Q. Um, so you know, I don't expect you to feel that way yet, but I'm trying to teach you to do so. So then that way you can get into good habits. Does that make sense? Or am I just rambling at this point? <laughs> no, it makes perfect sense. I just, okay. um, uh, well, like 
Bonnie, I probably would have said, I, I would not have known if it were if it was alive. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Um. So uh, what I would do is always try uh, practicing your reading. So doing more life and death problems, doing Tetsuji, and just when you play your live games, always try and read out like at least three moves ahead. Um. Do, if you get into that practice, you'll you'll become you'll make less of these moves, right? Less um gote moves and the less gote moves you make the more advantage you'll continue to get in all your games um all right i'll move on um so we're at move 27 uh aaron what's going on hello hello all right <laughs> You ready for long rambling scoldings? My yeah, I I am. I, this is how I spend my Saturday morning. <laughs> Getting told I'm wrong. Okay. So let's see here. So we look at you know what happened here, right? And we're I'm sure most of us are very familiar with this. Uh, just under attachment, Joseki, right? Um, oops, I didn't mean to give away the answer. But what do you think is the best move here? I wasn't paying attention, so I didn't see the answer. Um, so it's White's turn. It's White's turn. I think it's C. C. Okay. Yes. Why? Why C? Well, uh, B would be a defensive move, uh, 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 an appropriate. You know, it's a fine move, but C is. It's not exactly the million dollar turn, but it. It. It certainly creates more influence and it puts pressure on that black stone it's touching there okay so let, let's say it happened like this right um is what is c building right now a wall what do we like to do with our walls uh make them bigger yeah generally yeah we want to extend the influence and try and make a big area so that mm -hmm. we can either make big territory or we get a nice attack going, right? If if black invades your big area, then you get a, a, a favorable fight. But in this case, black is already here and pretty solid, right? Like black isn't 100% alive, but it's going to be very difficult to kill, right? Mm -hmm. So would you say this wall is useful or not useful? It is decidedly less useful. Yeah. <laughs> now that you point that out, it yes. also occurs to me that I I I chose the same route that Marty did. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Marty, so, you and I are on the same wavelength there. <laughs> so, because I knew it was Joseki, so I just that's where I went. <laughs> yep, and th this is why um this is why Sean you know says not to learn Joseki, right? So this is the perfect example. But well, isn't it A also Joseki? Yes, but all, uh, what I want you to know is that um, if you do learn Joseki, no matter if it's now or when you're 3Q, you're always going to make these mistakes no, when I you're mean, first they're... learning them. Um, uh, because you, you, what you have to train yourself for is to think of the aftermath, right? So uh, if you thought, like, C is the correct answer... Well, now, before you just choose it, you should uh, figure out what it's doing, and then do you like the aftermath? And in this case, the aftermath isn't that great. So um, why do I think B is better? Uh, the reason is, is because this group becomes solid. It's very hard now to kill this group. And this group is not meant for building, right? It's not meant to make a lot of territory. It's between two strong black groups. So there's no way that it's going to make a lot of territory. So its goal isn't to build and make a, a big wall and, you know, try and make a lot of territory. Its goal is just to survive and enjoy that it reduced this area. So that's uh, why this move is wrong, because it's not doing, uh, it's not going to do a lot in the aftermath. Whereas this move, yes, it's just settling. It's just like making a life. But its goal is already done, and now you can move on to the next big thing, right? Um, you can move on to where you can develop a lot of territory, or you can start attacking this, right? And, you know, taking the corner. Um, I like this too. And, of course, if you were worried about black developing on the bottom, 
then you could play something like this which would limit this area uh same with this this or even this um but what i wanted to teach with this problem is to look for the aftermath even though you know this is a joseki move and yes terry this is also a joseki move um we want to figure out what we need to do um, and to look at the aftermath. So before you choose any Joseki move, you want to think about, um, you know, what what we're going to do here. Um, does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> I got to right. do that more often. I'm, I'm very much an instinct player, so I need to I need to think about the aftermath. Yeah, for sure. Um, most players do, to be honest with you. Um, and then it, once you develop the habit of doing that, you're going to be doing way better than most of your the other players in your rank because people don't even usually think about this until they reach like five or six or seven Q. Uh, Terry, do you find yourself always looking at the aftermath when you choose the Joseki? Like, Not like, often enough. Like Not you, often enough at all. Uh, I tend to play one move at a time based on what the last move was uh, to the point where I hardly ever have a plan. So <laughs> I need to start making plans. <laughs> right, right. See, <laughs> at least you understand your weakness. I bet Sean tells you this often, right? About like thinking uh, about yeah. the aftermath. Yeah, yeah. And, and Ben too. I, <clears throat> I get good advice from two people and I, I still can't play. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, even like just this choice alone, but or even this choice alone, right? Like if you, you know the Joseki, you know, this Joseki is very common, right? You know this, 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 and uh, maybe even this, maybe, but probably not. So that, that one. But anyway, each one of these have different reasons to choose them and different aftermaths, right? Like this would normally be if you want to develop this side, but in this case, Black already has a stone here. So chances are I do not want to develop here. I don't want Black to play this. It'll make me feel uncomfortable. So then next, you know, I would, if I just want to settle in the corner, then I would do this and settle in the corner, right? And have a nice corner area. And so this is a nice little Joseki here. And then the other thing too is if I was thinking, well, if Black had opportunity to make a lot of territory here, then maybe I'd want to choose this one. And it's it's a little slow or solid, whatever you want to call it. But um, clearly, um, you're not going to get killed very easily. And the direction you chose was to break up this area. So, um, you know, either either of these I think would have been fine, either this or this. But um, just uh, knowing Joseki is one thing, but then making sure you think about what happens after the Joseki is done and seeing if you enjoy that outcome is very, very, very important. And as Terry said, she doesn't even do it as often as she should. Um, and she's, you know, uh, a higher level than everybody, you know, at the, at this time, right? Um, no, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm right in the middle of 9Q. I just like fluch, fluctuate up to 7Q, back down to 10, up to 9, you know. I, was, I, was gonna, <laughs> I think of you as a solid 7Q, Terry, but then when you do these 100 you game know, challenges, it's... then of course your rank's going to go down yeah. or up depending well, on how you do. Funny thing, it's, everybody perceives me as stronger than I actually am, so I just have to start believing it myself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but okay. So that that was a lot of once again rambling. You guys catch oh, no, me in not, this all the time. Oh no, not this, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll I'm ask. Gonna hide. I'm gonna hide for the answer. <laughs> I think uh, I asked. It. Yeah. So it's uh, Pico actually. So <clears throat> this, is, this is a good problem from for Pico because I think um, you generally just started, right? You're like eighteen, seventeen uh something like that i that, think the last time i saw your rank i don't maybe you've jumped up i i don't know <laughs> but uh so i think this is the the best question for you out of everybody in the room here so um a b or c it's white's turn um so we look here and where do you think the best move would be for white um I think I want to say C because A looks a little bit defensive and unnecessary 
B leaves like, I think an opening for um, Black to try and escape there, like try and maybe like go off to the right. Um, so I think C kind of like, Black can still escape obviously by going at like H5 or something and going up, but that's, that's something they probably wanted to do anyway. And it just goes back to their strength as opposed to like going into the um, lower right corner where they're kind of like invading and white maybe wants to build more territory there. So yeah. Okay, so C? Yeah. All right. So this is the this is a good lesson for you, uh, as a, as I hoped it would be. <laughs> so in the aftermath, let's um imagine the aftermath of it, right? So C, and then you know Black's gonna connect here, right? Mm -hmm. So is Black in a better position or is White in a better position after Black uh, attaches here? Um, um I actually, mean actually, I think Black's in a better position because like. Um, white could just like connect, but then like black can still go at B and then white is sad. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So this is why C is incorrect. So in nature, your, your nature, when you first learn go, you just want to Atari things. You just, you just do, you just want to Atari things <laughs> and hope they die. But, um, as you get stronger and stronger, you learn that when you Atari things, it's like squeezing toothpaste. Right, you you you're trying to close the cap, and then the toothpaste comes out. So now we look, and white is damaged. Right, white only has two liberties, and black has four. So out of this exchange, white uh, black became a m much better in this exchange. Um, so this is why <laughs> this is what happened in the game, and why Marty said he wanted to bury his head in the sand because he knew that this move would be better. Um, so this is called the bamboo cutter. It's a technique. Essentially, are you familiar with the bamboo shape? I think I've heard about it. <clears throat> okay, yes. Yeah. So this is a very good shape because you can see if white plays here, black gets to connect. If black, white plays here, black gets to connect. Very strong shape, like bamboo. So they call it the bamboo shoot, right? This is what they call the shape. So to break this bamboo, um, now black only has one move before it gets killed, right? This would be awful for black. So black usually has to connect like this. But when we look at the difference between, you know, um, white playing here and then, you know, possibly getting hurt or black just coming out um, versus when white cuts the bamboo and now pushes in front of uh, black here or even just stays in front. We can see that um, white is ahead in this race and black is behind, right? So just uh, just as simple as it can be, black is ahead in this race and being ahead is uh, better in Go. Um, and so this move allows you to move faster and get ahead. And if black doesn't notice it, then it allows you to just take a free kill. So uh, this is a very good shape to know. It's a very good technique to understand. And uh, it has a nice name, right? Bamboo cutter. So it's like very easy to remember. Um, so that's really it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, so yes, uh, as Marty uh, felt bad, he knew he should have played here. Right, Marty? Uh absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and, and, I, and I know that that's the shape move. I don't know. My finger hit it too fast. That's all I can say. It's yeah, and, <laughs> I, I'm actually not familiar with that. Joseki, that I just learned that now. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you can call it a Joseki because mm. of the because it's a pattern, but really, it's just a, a vital uh, point or a, a Tetsuji, right? This is like Tetsuji. Yes, it's a it's a, yeah. it's a fighting technique. Um, so just like this would, I, you know, I guess I wouldn't call it Tetsuji, but you can. It, it's just a, it's just a strong name shape, right? Which is the bamboo. Then cutting the bamboo is good as well, right? Because you don't want black to play here. So, very very good stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll move on. Uh, so Marty, uh, time for redemption. <laughs> yeah. right, this I, know, one, I, I know the answer here this one actually isn't even that bad but it's just good shape like even what you did in the game isn't that bad but 
Okay, what's the answer here? Best move. Oh, you know what? I thought it was going to be A because I know that, that leads to wonderful things. Um, but I, I know I remember that I should have gone to C. I think that was the uh, answer here. Yes. Okay. So for shape, um, whoever gets C first is going to be in a good shape. So if we'll, white plays here, black only has two liberties and can get killed. So black should either defend or strengthen, right? Golden rule of attachment. Um, and then white can play here. And so white ended up getting this nice uh, net looking shape, right? This is a very good shape for white. Very strong. Uh, it's black cannot break this connection, right? Because uh, so it's just good shape. Um, I don't know if it has a name like the bamboo cutter, but just the idea of like getting this like net, almost net shape is uh, a very good idea because it leads to good connectivity, uh, strong wall, good territory potential, all that good stuff. And it's sente too, right? Like to boot, right? So having sente is always a good idea, right? So something like this or this. Um, but now we look at the other side of it, right? So if white played away, let's let's just say white played A or something. Now there's a cutting point here, right? Potentially black can cut through the knight's move, the Romeo Juliet split, which is awful. And if white has to make an empty triangle, that's even worse, right? So instead we would want to play this, just like we learned in our other game, not to play this, but to, you know, read the one jump here. But still, even this should feel bad, right? Like compare it to the shape that we had um, before where, you know, white had all the good stuff versus now black having all the good stuff, right? Um, so <laughs> I know I know it's very subtle, right? Like I know it just, it doesn't sound like it's much, but I assure you that like having better shape here and like, you know, it feels much better. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all I can really say about it. I, I hope that you can see that this is preferable to, you know, black taking the shape. Because it just opens up lots of weaknesses here. Make sense, uh, Marty? It totally made sense. Okay. <laughs> In the game you played here, which isn't that bad, like, because it's still pressuring black, black answered. But now you should definitely just, you know, Make them answer one more time, and then you can play what you want, you know. Yeah. Um, because leaving this um, weakness opens up this cutting point, and then opens up more reduction, um, or even can open up this cutting point. Like if this becomes more safe, so there's just lots of um, holes here that can be patched in sente. So it's good to patch the stuff, especially in sente. All right, I'll move to 65. Um, Terry, we're looking at shape once again. Uh, so A, B, or C. I think you'll get this one. I hope so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, let's see. There's a potential double Atari here. No, for black. Uh, so... Um, I think it's between A and C and A looks like good shape, but it doesn't do anything to help the double Atari. So I think I'm going to have to go with C. Oh, okay. No, no problem. Um, so with C, uh, black can poke and then white has to connect, right? You don't yeah. want to connect this way or this way, right? Wait, I mean, you can connect this way. That's not terrible. Um, it just leaves um, a, a wrap up Tetsuji later, right? The, the roll impact, the Chinese call it. Um, so with this move, it leaves the vital point. So there's a major weakness for white here. And then it leads to bad shape, right? Double double um, empty triangles. It should feel bad, right? I, right. I, I would feel bad. Um, so 
this is creating an open net where black gets the first move and breaks the net. So this is actually not the good shape. Instead, we want to look at A, which is known. Do you know the name of the shape? It's not the table shape. Yes, that is correct. It's the table shape. So even though, yes, there is a double Atari here, when we look at the aftermath, right, who's ahead in the race? Oh, white is. And not only that, but do you see how weak these stones become? Yeah. White, white will be able to uh, actually just kill them. Which then would allow these, this group to connect with this group, which would be great. And so um, the table shape does leave you vulnerable, but it also creates great opportunity for you. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, and so this is why it's a known and named shape. Whereas this one, um, I guess I'll name it now. I'll call it the open net. In some cases, the open net's good, like right here. This is an open net, but it's good. And it's because these stones aren't in a lot of danger. So this is why this is nice. But in this case, these stones are in incredible danger, right? They're, they're almost immediately going to die. Um, and so we need the open net isn't good in this case because it's not going to lead to good shape. Um, so with the table shape, um, it's like an empty triangle, but it's an added one jump. And then it has this little lip here. And so even if we went like this, now you can make the bamboo shape, right? And this also is damaging this and allowing you to come out this way. So very good, good, uh, good thing to know your vital points and your shapes in the game. Um, well, we won't talk about that. Yeah, the game, seriously. So what kills, me, what kills me is that within a space of 16 stones, twice I made the wrong shape move, even though in theory, I I know what the vital point, I mean, I know that A is where you're supposed to play. Mm. So that's another thing too, right? Um, knowing where to play, right? Knowing the bamboo cut and knowing where to play with the other shape, the table shape um, is one thing. But now, just because you know it, that doesn't mean you've mastered it. So you need to practice it. And so that's where playing your games comes in, right? The, like, if you saw this as a problem, like, if this was a very isolated problem, you'd probably know to play here, right? Same with you, Terry, because you do problems all the time. So you'd, yeah. probably, you'd probably be like, oh, you know, I don't even have to think about it. But sure. in a real game, um, you haven't mastered it yet and so in every situation is different right like in the problem the these two stones probably wouldn't matter but in this game these two stones matter a ton right like and so um my point is is that don't feel bad marty um if, if, even if you know the shape and you just chose not to do it because it's just gonna take time everything takes time to get good right no matter what you're doing in life it takes time so uh it's good that you know it so now you just need to practice it more that's the key that's a, yes. that's all it is yes um all right so normally by the hour we uh we're, we're close to finishing but i've been over explaining everything so i don't know <laughs> i'm hoping it's helping i'm hoping it's not just uh draining you of your energy we'll see. i think it's helping <laughs> we'll see we'll see right um so bonnie uh Looking at this game, I'm going to ask you the direction of play. Uh, which side of the board is more important now or more developable or however you want to word it? Uh, and it, it looks like it's Black's turn. Yeah. Um, think C. C. Um, C. C break the white side okay so um when we learned this lesson um we did it in this game and uh we did it in chip's game it's very similar right um and so what we have to learn here is how to look at the board in a different way uh it's gonna take some time um i'm gonna ask so you you picked either B or C. I'm just gonna no, ask. No, I don't want B. I want C or A. Oh, C or A. Oh, okay. C is my top one. Oh, okay. All right. 
So then, yes. So then, um, when I look at C or A, C or A are a lot better. But B is wrong. Um, so why is A better than B? Well, you already have all three, so you don't need B. Okay. Yeah, so the way I look at the board to help my direction of play is always looking at the value of how much there is, right? So in this case, um, we have nine spaces to develop. And so there's not that much. But when we look at this side, there's 11. And so especially with this wall here, so this uh, side is much more developable. So in my opinion, A is uh, the, the much more valuable area to develop from. Um, so the, this is how uh, I want to try I and- I thought it weird that you didn't put F17 as an option because F17 would be probably my top choice. Yes, so F17 is the right move. Um, but the way I did this question was uh, just which side is more important. Oh, side, right? okay. Yeah, so F17 would be the move, but uh, you know, A is the most important side, right? And this side, playing this move would uh, make this side more valuable. But um, yeah, so the, the way I look at the game, especially in, at any point really, but especially in the opening, is I always look for the most valuable side. And this will always help guide me on where my next move should be. Um, so I never really have to question like, okay, where should I play and like feel lost, right? And that, that's some of the worst feelings you have, right? Is feeling lost. So um, hopefully by showing you guys um, how I evaluate the board, you can do it too. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, the A side is the most valuable. C is okay, um, but C is like a kind of a reduction move. Uh, and if white ends up taking this top side from you, taking the first move here, then it feels like white got the more value out of the, the exchanges here. So this, this is just maybe my own personal feeling, but yeah, A is definitely the more the value, the most valuable side when it comes to counting. Um, so yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll move on. Um, we're on move 25 or move 26. Uh, Aaron, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling lucky. I got a one in third chance, so this is the <laughs> one for me. All right, so we can see how this board developed. Um, what do you think is the best move here? Hmm. B. B. Okay. Yes. Why, why B? Well, one can imagine uh, that white is going to um, stay with, uh, you know, kind of keep their eye on the, uh, the direction, right? Well, that wouldn't, that wouldn't affect the move if there wasn't a C there first. Never mind. All right. C. <laughs> okay. Why C? <laughs> well... I can't think of that many good reasons why I would play A, but maybe that's wrong. <laughs> okay, well, let's discuss. Uh, um, so in the game, uh, Black did end up playing B, but what happened was once uh, um, all this was settled, now White got the first move, right? So mm -hmm. we have two conflicting walls. We have Black here and White here, and then White got the first move. So would you say white got the better in the in the situation? Yes. Yes, I believe that too, right? So white was in to, able to take a lot of the valuable side, right? Especially when both players wanted it. So um, in this case, when you play here, it allows white to develop a wall and then allows white to usually get the next move to take advantage of that wall. Um, and so playing in the corner here isn't the right time and or direction at this point of the game. 
So when we play C here, uh, if white has to defend its corner in some manner, then black is going to get the next move here, right? Black is going to get the next move on the most valuable side. And so ah. black can try and develop this area to be much bigger. Um, this is a game, you know, I'm not saying it's the ultimate, like, okay, black won the game now. But the idea is that um, wanting the, the bigger side is most important. I think uh, C would be the, the best way to develop this side. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll move on to the next one. Um, Pico. A, B, or C? Oh, no. Um, see, I was just thinking about this when you showed that before. Uh, honestly, personally for me, I would go with C because it kind of builds up your strength already in that area. Um, uh, and to be although, fair, I wouldn't say C is the perfect move. The question more is direction of play, which, which part of the oh, yeah, board yeah. is most valuable. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I meant. I don't think I would like move on like k4 necessarily <laughs> okay which to be honest i don't think is a bad move either at the same time but um so c uh, uh would you say c is the answer uh yeah i think so i think so too so um b right now does involve safety right maybe you're not feeling safe right now and so i could see why you would play b um but to be fair these stones are very strong and they have many, a lot of area to run a, from. So like, even if white was to do like a direct attack on uh, black here, uh, one, I still think it would be very difficult for white to get away with this. And two, black can always come out. So even if black can't make two eyes here, um, then black will always be able to like run away. Uh, and pretty much has one eye. Once black plays here, Maybe it'll go like this. Here's your two eyes right now. So there's, there's your life, right? Um, so the, this group is very resilient and strong. So this wouldn't be the right area. This one is okay. Um, it's putting pressure on this group. Um, so I don't think it's a bad move um, per se. But when we look at the value of the board, uh, this is the most valuable area. Uh, because if we play something like this, or let's say white doesn't answer it, right? Um, then if white ends up taking a move here, white's extending very far from its wall, which is asking for a lot of territory. So this is the most developable area here. And by black playing here, um, you know, black is limiting white's territory and also building white, uh, black's own territory. So this feels like the right direction to me. All right, let's go on. Oh, on move 12, yep. Um, so, uh, Marty, uh, what are we looking at? What do you think the best move is here? This is actually a review of your game. Yeah, disaster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I know what I did, which was wrong. And... So I think A is the best move. All right. Did you look at the aftermath? Of A? Yep. Well, ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, B, I know, I know the aftermath of B, so I don't have to look at that. Um, C, I don't quite know where it's going to go. A, he'll hane up, I suppose, and I can come back and or extend. Or, yeah, so this looks okay to me. Good. All right. Good. Yes. So, uh, Aaron, this was your game. Uh, I did do a review of it. Eventually, it will go up on YouTube, so I'll make sure to send it to you. Um, but yeah, so this is correct. So the idea is that you want to get some strength in order to attack A. When we look at this, once you have this diagonal, now white can't connect under. So now white becomes significantly weaker. And then there's also some weakness here for white as well. So, you know, does white fix itself? If it does, then black's just going to get 
one extra move against this white stone and uh white's gonna have not a good day so so yeah uh that well, this move is correct and you might ask well what's wrong with this one um if we're familiar with this um this pattern here it's a middle game joseki that, um, that's what i was going for i yeah. <laughs> i always mess it up but i was trying for that yeah the under attachment here yep and so um that was good for you aaron so because he one jumped now you have the opportunity to do it and uh you pretty much did it so that was good you ended up uh when we look further you ended up connecting here and then it was really good for you in the game um so to prevent that this move black needs to make a diagonal now before in the past i would just play something like this or this and then um with this diagonal now white can't do this anymore um so and you might ask why um hopefully i won't mess this up I, uh, but uh let's see so even if we went like this this gets a little messy um but it's fine like black is definitely alive here and white is weak here and white has some weakness here Black has one weak group, but black has a lot of places to run, so I wouldn't really call it that weak. Um, and then even here, right, we can just connect, or if he splits, we can... This would be bad. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the point is, is that when white plays here, it's good for black, I guess, regardless of which way black goes. Um, so this diagonal is the key. That's all I really wanted to show to prevent this. Uh, in this game, black played here, and so then white was able to do this and got a great result from it. Uh, but to uh, go further, um, by playing an attachment, it uh, makes white have to play, like continue to play here. And so you get this diagonal in Sente. And so that's why I prefer this now more than this. I used to play this, but now I play this. That's re that's really it for this. Um, good job, Marty. So now uh, I will ask Bonnie. We have three moves here. Uh, it's Black's turn. Uh, what do you think the best move would be for Black here? This one's a little high level, to be fair. I would play... Mm. I wonder if I let's see if I play B and then play C. Can I connect under to my corner? No. So I would play A. A. Okay. That's that's good. That's my first instinct when I look at this group. But um, there's actually a, a further, more advanced answer. So I'm going to ask you to look at it again. I'll give you the answer, but see if you can find why C is the answer. I guess everybody should try to figure it out. But you were right, by the way. B is wrong because, you know, black can't connect under. So this wouldn't be that good for black right now. But let's so try and figure it out. Uh, no, I can't find why. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Can anybody see why other than Marty? Because I bet Marty remembers. I think I sort of know this might be a silly idea, but like if you go to B and then white might try to Atari and um, but then you can just take that stone by going at B. Um, well, B isn't right. Uh, so what we're trying no. to figure out is why C is right. Oh, are you saying yeah. that white would do this? Okay. Uh, no, well, I was assuming white would Atari at S8, but I mean, there's that's probably too obvious. Um, yeah, but I if, think if white Atari is this way, yeah, then black. Yeah, is exactly. Right. Um, so, but white white has to make that move, I guess. Um, and then, oh goodness, it gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no worries. <laughs> All right, uh, Aaron, you want to crack at it? You want to try and figure out the next move for Black? Nope. 
Okay. So I, I have no you. idea. <laughs> All right. Well, Marty, tell us what it is. I think you should hit the head of the two stones, I guess. Okay. And then white needs oh, to no, kill Oh, no, no. Extend. Stone. Extend. You extend. I, I'm sorry. Extend on the... Oh, is that right? Wait. Is this, this right? This, this is right. <laughs> oh, good. I remember. Oh, thank you. Um, white, so, white so that, that, like, we'll just go through the... We'll go through the motions now, right? So, um... If white cuts this way, then black just kills these two stones. If white cuts this way, then black gets to connect here. And then um, now we see that black has successfully Romeo Julieted these stones. So this stone becomes very vulnerable. And if it dies, this is a very big area for black. Like, huge. So um, the idea with all this is... Is that in the game marty played here and then it just did nothing right for a long time and then it had a chance to do something but that's not the point right the point is that this really kind of just helped white and hurt black here um and then for bonnie's answer this is good not to get hit on the head of two stones and makes good shape and is my first instinct but once white gets to play this now these Ataris don't matter and white is connected and this is terrible because black can't make any territory here. Black has a floating group in the middle now. Um, so then the more advanced, which I definitely think is an advanced way of seeing this, um, is that you Atari this and then use it as a sacrifice and now white can't stop, can't connect anymore. It just, it just cannot. No matter how hard white tries, it cannot connect. And so this is a very beautiful beautiful uh uh problem here to learn from which is Holy to cow. which is to remember your shapes right hitting the head of two stones is very very beautiful and uh very useful very useful you could even go further right um i think when i showed you marty i played this first and then played this yeah. uh and so that way you can even see that um white doesn't can't even get points here really because of the stone so it's like a perfect uh, enclosure. White can't even play something like this, right? So if we just play this way, then white has a chance to come under later, right? Which is stinks. So uh, to take that away would even be better. So that's it. Um, does that look uh, does that look nice, Bonnie? Yeah, it does. It's cool, right? I, I thought it was cool. I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is this is cool. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, remember your shapes. And in this case, what I tell Marty is to always read both Ataris. I think if he just read one, two, and then three, he would see that like this stone gets destroyed and then this gets connected. And so um, this is a bad Atari. So even just playing this would have been better than giving the sacrifice up. So, you know, always, 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 if there's two Ataris, make sure to read both of them and think of the aftermath, right? The key, that's, that's the good habit to do, whether you're doing Joseki or doing your reading, is to read all the way through it and then see if, like, is this what I want? And if you, I'm sure if you read it, Marty, you would have chose, said this is bad, right? Right. So, right. Get to the. Um, Aaron, I think you're up. Okay. <laughs> uh. So, and this was your game too. So this is a good question. So All you right. ended up playing here, which was good, right? And because you built this big moyo. Mm -hmm. But now you have to look at Marty's shoes. Uh, if you were Marty and, you know, he was you, where would you play to reduce this area? Ah, oh, man, all of those options are close. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. C. C. Okay. Yes. The attachment. So this is what happened in the game, ah. um, and to be honest, I think they're all good. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't. Once think again, any, Marty. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of them are bad uh, in this case. Uh, I like A more just because it's a bit more on the sector line, maybe a little under it, um, but it feels a little more safer to do. 
maybe uh maybe i would have even gone this far but um the idea is that i just kind of want to reduce this area without having to stress too much if black tries to enclose me in it's going to be a long time before he can do so and i have all these fun attachments and dog face shapes and even just more jumping to do right and so um you know uh, having being a lot lighter would be make it an easier reduction for me this attachment i like though um i figured you would have played here aaron to save all this and then you you know you'd push black around for a little bit and then connect under and so everything kind of is safe um but instead I think, I think i think my response was just me being greedy <laughs> i'm just trying to kill everything yeah well if that's the case right this is a one turn game right so he's always going to be able to keep moving ahead of you by one turn um and i do like that you tried to get in front of him um but he ends up getting good shape and even though the game ended here um black i think would have been okay i think black would have been able to either get out or make some type of life um but the game ended here so we don't know now <laughs> but um yeah anyway i think all these moves were fine uh to be honest i don't think there's a bad move out of the bunch uh the only one that i can say and the reason i guess i brought it up was is this one does feel a little more risky um so like it, because it's so close to this wall even though it's an attachment it feels a little risky and uh i have more questions I don't know. Do you guys want to keep going? Yeah. Okay. I do have a game to show you in the end. Uh, Jory actually beat me in a in no handicap game. He actually beat me. Uh, so I really wanted to show it off. I, I was hoping he would be here today, but that's all right. Um. So let us see. Best direction, uh, Pico. Uh oh. Um. You know what? I think B. B. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on a, Yeah. 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 B is definitely good. So the reason why why did you pick B over A? Because A and B are very similar, right? They're trying to develop a big uh, a shamari, right? An enclosure. They wow. are, B? and like i think that if you moved at like f17 it wouldn't be as a huge difference from like moving at like what is that like c15 but um i think i like i like b better because it kind of it just kind of looks like you're trying to get that whole territory in the middle plus like everything except like um that tiny corner there so like if you can develop that correctly like white can just be very small <laughs> yeah yeah so the yeah the key to this so the as you said this is very similar to this right it's actually the same amount of territory um but the idea of white wants to enclose this corner right if you play here white's going to enclose the corner um so stopping white from doing so completing the three four um enclosure sequence is a very good move because now white's gonna have to run away or like maybe kick and then jump or you know uh maybe it'll counter pincer but even you jumping out you can see that you're kind of getting an attack on both sides against white white has two groups to worry about and black has one so uh, any way you look at it, um, black taking this side is more important than this one. And if we do the same exact thing, we can see that um, if we, white just encloses the corner and black now has a weak stone, the so black has to protect and then white can, you know, take more, right? White can keep going. Um, so there's a big difference for between approaching a, a stone, a 3-4 stone this way which just gives a very easy enclosure for them and then you're weak versus stopping their enclosure and then you getting a, a strong position, right? So, but yeah, good job. <laughs> uh, let's go to the... Uh, Marty. We're looking at 
A, B, and C. We look at the the game. Um, you know, uh, White missed this opportunity to play the Joseki move, so Black played a really good move against it. And then um, White attached under. So where should we play, Black? Huh. Well, not B. Okay. Because you've been touched, you have to do something. Well, so move attachment. Breaks, C breaks the tiger's mouth. Okay. But yeah, I C. I I think A would not be a good move because if you go there, yes, then this looks this looks not good. Yes, 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 yes. This is the the ten down move here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, throughout the whole game, um, no matter what's going on in the game, well, the the computer's screaming, "Why haven't you broken this tiger's mouth?" Um, so y yes, this is the ten down move. Um, so yes, uh, in good on talking about the attachment rule, right? Like this is the golden rule, right? Um, so white has touched black. Black has lost the liberty. But it is now Black's turn, meaning that Black can take the advantage because they both have the same uh, liberties. So by breaking this tiger's mouth, you can either just flatten this out if you want to. I don't know if it would be the best strategy. But by flattening it out, you can definitely cut these two stones, which would be nice. Uh, even if you just leave it alone. So let's say white just connects now. And now you take this. Um, you've gotten a much nicer Moyo. And even if you use these as a sacrifice, which, you know, isn't the funnest thing to do, but even if you do use that as a sacrifice, you can see your wall has become very strong and a huge moyo. Um, so there's so many advantages to breaking this tiger's mouth. And last but not least, if white runs away or tanukis and plays over here, then you can just cut through. And now uh, this becomes very solid, which means this becomes much weaker, right? Um, so breaking the tiger's mouth is a good instinct to have, and you should be followed in most cases, especially when somebody touches your stone, you want to follow the rules of attachment, right? So, um, and we can finally see if we went this way, then white getting a nice tiger's mouth here is pretty painful for this group. If black comes down, then white comes out. If black goes over, first of all, white can still get away with some tiger's mouth and then come under and attach. So the shape is so important to make and or break tiger's mouth. Um, please, please always consider it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, last thing. Last thing. Uh, I'll ask Bonnie. Uh, A, B, or C? So white um, invaded, and you have two strong groups. Um, so what should you do now? Um, B? B, OK. So B um, is, <laughs> B, um, is feels like the wrong move because of a few reasons um one white can escape pretty easily so yes um you have to sacrifice a stone but this isn't that bad for white right because black got cut in half this group has lost a lot of its stuff and this group had to buckle down um so the other ways um white could play this move as well and so you can't break the connectivity of white and even though white's ugly it is breaking up a lot of area for black so b isn't that good of an attack on the stone at first and then the second reason is is that this is building a wall this way but the direction because e is here you can't make a lot of points this way right you can make m much more points like utilizing the top um so my move would have been this one which then white has to jump out and then you could just continue to build territory and while white continues to fight for its life black will now uh be able to continue to build on both uh a area and b area so this would be very good attacking this group not trying to kill it but just Corral it, right? Trying to um, be like a shepherd dog, right? These are the sheep, and you're just pushing them around the way you want to, so then you can make territory on both sides. 
Uh, and then the computer's move was this one. And the reason is, is because um, if black can make a big enough wall here, then once you get this push, now white is running into a wall, right? Into a, to a fisher's net. Maybe you want to make it a little bigger first. Um, something like this and this, this, right? Um, but once you get that fisher's net set up, now you can... Um, really push white into it and you know once again make points on a side and b side so the computer you know is a little more advanced and last but not least the computer really wanted you to play here <laughs> still <laughs> um but you know i just wanted to be make this a little more relevant um for this area so for me i would have played here and chased it away you know, and then for the computer, the computer would set up a trap first, and then it would chase it away. But yeah, uh, that is it for this one. We're getting to the end. Uh, any questions or anything on that, Bonnie? No. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, I I think an easy way to remember how to make this work is to take away its base. So I always focus on taking away my opponent's base. Um, and so as they run away, they're not making any points. And then I can just attack them and make points while they run away. So um, that's the that's a big difference between A and B. This is attacking on top. Um, and this would be good if uh, these were black stones here because then you would just make a bunch of points here. But because they're not black stones, then you know, you're not making a lot of points here and then yeah, well, you can't exactly kill white just very easily. So instead, it's better if you can't kill them than to just make them run away. All right. Uh, Aaron, you're up, my friend. I believe okay. you. All right. <laughs> oh, this is a broader question. Okay. It's hard for me to see whether or not C or B, uh, one is more valuable than the other. The key to that um, is to think of the aftermath and yeah. then think of um, direction of play, right? Every, every move is a direction of play question because every move you could be developing something big or attacking yeah. something. Um, and so every game you play, every move, like your sense of direction is going to help you or kill you. I'm going to go with uh, A. Uh, <laughs> okay. Which, which which sounds incorrect. No, 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 no. Very correct. Very yeah! correct. Yeah. You can see that um, this area is the most developable, right? Mm -hmm. If we compare this A to like a move like this, this side already has like low stones in very small area not very developable. This side has a big wall facing a big area. It's very, very developable. Unless, like, even if white, like, comes in here to pincer, even if we do, do just the most basic stuff, you can see that now um, black can make a lot of strength and then fight in here and have the advantage because this is black's neighborhood, right? So um, a lot of people are scared of getting pincered, so they don't make these moves. Um, but you don't have to be scared of the pincers. Um, you just have to learn from them, right? Um, but let me see. Okay, see you, Marty. Um, so anyway, A is correct. So when we look at the game, uh, fun <laughs> funny enough, uh, you know, um, Bonnie, do you remember? No. <laughs> so so uh, we ended up reviewing uh, one of your games, right? And you made the the same exact moves. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, you know, we talked about why they were bad, right? And then in the, the next, you did the same mistakes in the first ten moves. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Twenty twenty minutes later, you did the exact same move. Yeah. So it's just a habit that we, you know, um, we need to break, right? We need to uh, get your direction of play more developed. But it was just funny that you ended up playing the same exact moves we just discussed. Um, but yeah, so in this case, in the game, um, Black played here, which this side isn't that valuable. So this is not This is a good move, actually, but it doesn't feel like the right timing, right? If you can get more here, then go for the more first. 
Uh, because if you don't, then maybe that more goes away, right? Or the your opponent takes the more. So it's better to for you to grab the most that you can. Um, and then with this move, it was very um, subdued or uh, not as proficient, right? So it would have been better to stretch this way. Because if white plays like this, I mean, this is great for black, right? Um, but playing here, you can get undercut and like it allows white to take this. And so white's like almost has like a double wing formation. This is a lot of points if white gets all this. Um, but anyway, that we're going into the review. Let's just go into the questions. <laughs> um, okay, so Pico, uh, let's see. What do we got? We got A, B, and C. So when we see black invaded this way and then got kicked, and now it is black's turn. Where should black go? I like B. Um, A could also be good because it's kind of trying to like attach to white there and kind of nom on it. Um, C, I think, is like backing up a bit. Um, B is kind of middle of the road and it's kind of, it kind of, it's looking at both the D16 and the G17 stones and kind of saying, come at me, bro. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's my inexpert opinion. All right. All right. So let, let's talk about it. So you said A is like, it's, it's going to uh, elicit a response, right? Yeah. So um, putting pressure on your opponent can be very good, especially if you're trying to like get out of here, right? You're trying to leave. Um, so th this move actually is pretty good. And I don't, I admit that I'm not the best of utilizing it. I've seen it in like a lecture and I didn't study it enough. And there's like a whole thing and like ladders and um, it, it's very complicated. So I usually don't use this one uh, myself. But it, it, I know it is a move, and it's, you know, even if we just play it, like, in the most non-efficient way, it still looks pretty good for black. Black isn't going to die here, right? And so, and you press down white. So I think it's a good move. C is my preferred move, because we just get out of there, right? And um, if white plays somewhere else, say white plays something like this, or over here, well, now you can press down with a shoulder hit, and this becomes very good for black, right? Because black is getting a very solid seal against white. And if white tries to attack this, it's actually very difficult for white to really get accomplish anything here. It's going to be very, very difficult. Um, maybe I would cut through here because this is like a big... Um, what do you, uh, Romeo Juliet split, right? And so if white plays something like this, then we can come down and start killing these three stones. Um, but I would have to do some reading with the these cuts and, and everything. But the idea is when you do this long jump, there is a lot of safety in it, right? Here's the ladder. Uh, ladder might be good for white. So the you might want to exchange this move first um, because white has to attach and now it's fine. So there's a lot of um, fighting involved with this uh, move that maybe you aren't comfortable with. Um, but just knowing that when you have these two stones standing up like this, you can do this double jump. Um, and it's actually very, very easy to stay connected with your stone. And even if you don't, you can use it as a sacrifice to come out and then uh, use your influence. <laughs> but um, anyway, this is my preferred move. This move, on the other hand, um, there's actually a cutting point. OK. Um, but maybe now is not the right time to do it. Let me just see. If this ladder works for white, then this cut is fine to do. And then these stones are going to become in a lot of danger. And if black fights the danger, right, then these stones become in a lot of danger. And this would be really good right now for white. It looks very similar to what I showed you where black gets a wall here, but getting the extra captures and being out really hurts black here. So 
um, if black has to come back this way, then you can see white can also come out this way. And once again, white is just out and hurting this group and hurting this group. And so this, uh, this, uh, no, knight's move doesn't really work too well here. Whereas these examples, if white tries to attack it, you can see that um, black is probably going to be okay. And white's still going to be sealed in here. So keeping the seal is like the most important part of, I guess, all of this. Um, uh, I know I'm not teaching this particular answer the best way, but can you see the difference between like B and C? Yeah. But maybe you can see the difference of like what happened in the game. That's the only thing I can mainly show you. Um, so, all right. Yeah, so the idea is you said this is kind of like a middle move, right? In in comparison, it's like, um, but one thing you want to remember in Go is usually wishy-washy moves, moves that almost do something for both, you know, it doesn't, isn't fully doing something for you, right? So it's it's very hard to explain, but it was a good example. And hopefully, um, for Bonnie and everyone else here, when you get kicked like this, uh, please know that like this is a very safe move to try. And it comes with really good follow-ups um, by pressing down on this stone. Um, you can see that, uh, you know, sealing in white is the best th option that you have here. Because you're already outnumbered here, so you're not expected to get an amazing result. But if you can seal in white, then it, that's definitely a good result. All right, I think we're on the last one. And everybody left but you and Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's late. Usually we wrap up the class by then. Um, Bonnie, what do we got here? We got A, B, and C. What do you think the best move is? Mm, C breaks the tiger mouth, which was a big topic that day, so I'll say C. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you just say C, though, and yes, C is a good move, remember to analyze the aftermath of each move, right? Yeah. So, like, if you look at this move, and then we look at this move, uh, think of both aftermaths and see which one do you feel is more valuable. I'll see. Well, white can still reduce the center afterwards if they play like m12 or something so but b does it really defend my entire bottom side there i think it does so b yeah so b is just going for more territory and um it, it's more defensive maybe white can still be okay uh, in here but white's definitely gonna have a harder time um you know in this area like this isn't gonna be an easy fight for white, and it it, it that's what one this move here does. It makes it harder for white to invade, and if white doesn't invade, well now you can just take a lot of points, right? You can just you you just got yourself quite a lot of points here. Uh, C is very good, especially with the local shape we have here, um, because you can see how um, like crappy this feels for black. Um, if black, if white keeps taking the best moves, white's building a huge remoyo, uh, black is getting much less points. You're getting bullied around. So it's kind of like white's taking the sente, right? So this move, this prevents all that, which is great. But when it comes to value, um, this doesn't look that valuable in comparison to, um, what you could get on the bottom. So in this particular case, I would have played here. Maybe another teacher would argue with me. Um, I'm not sure. But what we can agree on is that A is very bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, with that being said, um, the, both of these moves are really good. Uh, so today we're going to... I can hear my video in the background. <laughs> uh, so the last thing, uh, I mean, it's over. Like the lecture's over. Uh, but I didn't know if you wanted to see Jory beat me. I don't know. I could explain it extremely fast, or we can end it here. Whichever you, you want can to go ahead. 
I'm curious. I couldn't. I was sort of shocked. I was like, man, Jory, Jory, he beat me. Um, it was an even game. This was uh, correspondence. And, you know, we went through a regular Joseki. Regular Joseki. Uh, when we see, you know, black is getting this, black is trying to get this, white has gotten a nice corner, white has nice stability here. Um, then I play the biggest move, right? The biggest move on the board to get the most amount of territory is to play this, right? Because I'm making a very three dimensional shape. Very good move. And then black um, is low and on one side. So I didn't really fear this. Um, and I felt like I had a nice advantage in this game right now. Um, so in this case, uh, he played here and I ended up pincering because I wanted to develop this area. And so uh, he took the corner and then I was a, so now he has a corner, I have a corner, very equal. He has a corner and then another corner, but I have a bigger potential. Um, what happened was though, is I played here, which is good. And then he played here, which is good. And then I played here and this is where I lost the game. So just from this decision alone, I lost this game. And this is kind of how high level goes, right? If you just make one directional play mistake, uh, you can lose. And that's exactly what happened. So um, this was very slow. Um, I was hoping he would answer and then I would play here. But because he didn't answer, he went for uh, to try and threaten these. And I got more strength to keep this connection. And then he got this move. So at this point, now his Moyo, uh, I don't know why it jumped, but let's see. So at this point, his Moyo is vastly bigger than mine. And if he gets all this, then he wins the game. Um, I also had a big Moyo, but not nearly as big as his. So my bad decision of playing here instead of breaking this Moyo up uh, was ultimately my downfall. Um, so then he took the advantage here, then we did this running, so we both end up getting a Moyo, but his is bigger. And then I thought that I would be able to invade in here. Um, even if I was playing somebody at my level, I still would have thought that. So it wasn't a, a case of me underestimating him. It was a case of my hubris. I was like, yep, I can, I can, I can stop this. And I couldn't. So, uh, Jory played this amazing game where, you know, even though I was threatening him left and right and making all these nice attachments, he was uh, really well done, uh, did a really good job of breaking the, my eyes. Breaking my eyes. Uh, let's see. I thought I would be able to get out this way, which at one point I could have. Um, but uh, this was the next and last move that got me killed um so instead if i just made two eyes if i if i just played here and here uh i would have had one eye two eye and lived um but instead i in my hubris i was like oh i want to keep all this moyo uh so i played here and then he poked he uh took these he was uh, he poked this eye <clears throat> then he poked this eye then he stopped me from connecting here because there was a, a time where as long as this is connected, then if I played this, I'm connected. If I play this and he plays this, then I'm connected in these die. So it was beautiful how he uh, poked every single eye I had, poke, poke, uh, sealed me off, made this into a false eye. It was just extremely well executed. Um, and I died, and so I just decided to resign here. Uh, so he beat me in an even game. It was really well done. And it goes to show how important direction of play is. Uh, just this one decision here uh, of allowing, uh, making a slow move allowed him to make a much bigger Moyo, and then he was able to win the game because of it. So good for Jory, very, very excellent uh, job. I try, I wasn't babying him at all. I played him like I'd play anybody else. <laughs> um, any, any, any thoughts on that? Was it, was, is that entertaining for you guys? <laughs> that was interesting. I, yeah. Especially like looking at his comments during the game, like, oh no, what's going 
Yeah, he he told me he was scared the whole game. <laughs> I would have been scared too. <laughs> he thought for sure that I was going to make a living group and um I, I did have one opportunity. There was just one time that I was like, "Okay, I can just live now." And I was like, "No, I'm going to save all my territory and live." And I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is good. All right, I'm going to end the recording.